Welcome back to another video and thanks again for joining me. Have you ever wanted to put some notation into a notation program like Sibelius, for instance? Perhaps you don't have a very good facility on a piano keyboard uh, and putting in the notes, you know, tapping in a regular computer keyboard could be a little bit tiresome for you. Well, you know, the Aerophone Go and all the Aerophones can be used as a MIDI input device for something like Sibelius. So in this program, I thought I'd show you what I found. Uh, we'll show you the best way to set this up. I'll demonstrate inputting notes in real time into the score. And then right at the end, some really useful tips on how to tidy up any inaccuracies in the score that might have happened. So keep watching to the end of the video. Please subscribe to my channel. That's very, very helpful to me. And you know, I also now have a Facebook uh, group uh, page. And uh, if you'd like to join that, it's called ISAX, I-S-A-X. Please send me a request on that. We can continue further discussions. There will also be some additional tips and small videos on that Facebook group page as well. Let's get into this video. To begin with, you'll need to make sure that your uh, aerophone is connected to the computer. You can check out this video here for more information on various ways to connect to the computer. I'm using the Aerophone Go, and that way I can use the Bluetooth connection here, so I don't have to any, have any wires connected. You can also connect uh, directly by a USB cable if you'd like to. So it's best to make that connection before you switch on or boot up uh, the Sibelius program. If you haven't done that, don't worry, I'll show you something in just a second uh, of, of a way of correcting that. Now Sibelius has what they call a quick start menu, and this is where you can make some settings. Actually, it's gonna save you some time later on if you decide on some of these settings now. I'm gonna try and produce a short score here using um, something like a flute and a bassoon. This will be a, a little duet that I'm putting together now. So I've selected the treble clef option here, and I'm going to, first of all, change the instruments that are going to be used. I don't need their default treble clef. I'm going to use a flute, add to score, and I'm going to use a bassoon, add to score. There are my two instruments. Further down, you can make selections of your time signature. Well, I already want 4-4, four, four, so that's fine. My piece of music actually is going to begin with a crotchet and a crucis, so I've put that in there. Tempo text, I'm going to go for, uh, well, let's say allegretto. And then moving down, I'm going to select G major as my key, because that's the key I'm going to play in. And I can make a, a title for this. I'm just going to call it demo for now. Click on create. And there is my score already nice and clean, clearly set up, ready to go for recording. Now then, remember I said just a moment ago about the connection. If you didn't already make a connection, well, don't worry. You can go to note input and in the top left hand corner, input devices. Now here you'll see a list of devices that are already connected and recognized by Sibelius. If you don't see something that looks like your aerophone there, then um, just click on find new input devices and you should find it comes up. Now, as you can see, the aerophone actually shows up as a rather long list of numbers here. And of course yours will be different, but that is the aerophone connected over uh, Bluetooth in, in my case. So there's your connection. Now, before we start to input notes, we need to make sure there are some settings uh, that we uh, make to make sure that uh, Sibelius reads our input from our Aerophone as cleanly as possible. This is something that's really gonna help you save time later on. So. I'm going to go here to flexi time options and there's a little drop down arrow here that opens up another box. 
Now there's a few things on this first page. The default here under flexibility of tempo will be uh, low or poco rubato. Now I don't like that setting. I prefer the metronome to be absolutely in time. So I select that as non rubato. I'm going to leave this on nine bars input so I don't have a load of extra bars uh, that are empty at the end of my score. And in this column under voices, it will come as default record into multiple voices. I'd suggest you uncheck that and leave it as record into voice one. Moving on into the notation tab here at the top. This is really important. We can select our shortest value of note. So let's say I'm going to play a piece of music or record it in, and I think my shortest value is going to be a, a semiquaver. Well, that's where I'd uh, select semiquaver here in this menu. What that does is Sibelius uh, receives the messages from your playing and it will try to make sure that everything is connected to the nearest semiquaver note. Uh, it can save a lot of tidying up later on. I uncheck staccato and tenuto. And over here, I have all of the tuplet options set to none. This is the way I find it's cleanest. Obviously, if you're going to record something with lots of triplets in it, you might have to leave that set to on. But now I'm ready to go. So that's my settings done. Let's see what happens now when I start to input notes in real time from the Aerophone Go. Right, I've made those settings. I'm ready to start inputting notes into Sibelius. So all I need to do is highlight the stave that I'm going to play in, which is the top stave, the flute part. I'm going to click record and start to play along in real time with the metronome. Now, obviously, the key thing here is to try and stay in time with the metronome as carefully as you can. So don't play any change of speed at all. Try and be as accurate as you can playing along with that click track. So it's going to count me in and I'll start playing. Let's see what happens. Okay, well that came out pretty well. I can see uh, one little spot there where it didn't quite read the fingering that I thought I played, but I'm going to leave it for now and carry on and record my second part. This is going to be a, a bassoon part lower down. So again, I've selected that stuff and I'm going to press record and put in the bassoon part. Okay, great. Um, that went well, but as you can see, there are some elements of that score that didn't really come out quite the way I intended. Now, I might have to uh, replay some of those bits, but in the next section, I'm going to show you a couple of little tips that might just sort out any inaccuracies that have come up on the score straight away. OK, so I've done my score. I've input my notes in real time using my Aerophone Go. And uh, as you can see on the screen now, there are a few elements of that that actually didn't come out too cleanly. I felt that I played it quite well in time, but, you know, something didn't quite get received properly by the program. So, yes, I could try and try and try again until I get a nice clean recording and hopefully uh, manage to do that. But I'm going to show you a little trick here that I've learned that might just save you any more time inputting notes. So all we need to do now is if I select the whole score 
Um, so I'm going to click on here and I'm going to do Command A to select the whole score. Now, just next to the record button, there's something called Renotate Performance. Click on it. And here again, we get another few options. Now, the most important one at this stage is, again, this section here that says about what is your shortest note value. Uh, what's going to happen here? Again, we're going to select the semiquaver option here. And Sibelius is going to kind of reconsider this score and perhaps uh, make another decision about what it thinks you intended to play having heard you play the whole tune. This is really clever kind of artificial intelligence or something going on, but look what happens here. I'm going to press OK. So straight away there, my score looks almost perfect. OK, let me just show you what I had again here. That's what it looked like before. And you can see here there are various bits in the score that really didn't come out very tidily. I'm going renotate performance, select the semiquaver, and bingo, I've got a really clean looking score. Some of you might all uh, might have noticed there's still something here that doesn't look quite right. Those two notes in the end of that bar should have been two quavers. Let me see if I can reuse that same feature. Just select the one bar. Now, I know that those two notes should have been quavers. Renotate performance, select quaver notes. Whoops, that didn't do it. Select quaver notes or for our American friends, uh, eighth notes, I think you call them. Here we go. There we have a very accurate representation of what I played into Sibelius. Uh, with the help of Sibelius, it's tidied up that score for me very nicely. Of course, I can add all my other features, slurring and uh, uh, dynamic markings if I want to. And, uh, you know, it's ready to print. Now, just one additional thing here. Um, of course, a keyboard player can add chords and we can only add one note at a time on the aerophone. You could go and re-record over the top of your score a second note uh, or third note or whatever you want to do above each tone. But just as a demonstration, this is what I do if I want to use chords. Let's say, for instance, this note here, the D. Let's say I wanted to make that a triad with, say, D, F sharp and A. Well, you know, there's a really quick way of doing this. Your uh, keys on the top of your keyboard, numbered one, two, uh, nine, they will add another um, interval above the chord tone for you. So I want to add a third, so I just press a number three and another third. I've got my chord very, very quickly there. Also, if I want to do one on here, let's say I still want to keep this a D major chord. Well, this time I'll press four to get a D and above that a three. Really quick to do. If you want to add notes below, you can add notes by pressing shift and then click your uh, number key above the keyboard. So you can, you see, you can pretty much keep up to speed uh, with any pianist putting notes into uh, Sibelius just by using the aerophone and a couple of short key presses, but particularly renotate performance is fantastic. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found something useful uh, on this. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.